Hi, good morning, everybody, and thank you. I always uh, hate following Aria because that's such an absolutely fabulous project. Um, I'll talk for the next 10 to 15 minutes about Troilus Gold. Uh, you can see some pictures in the front there. Troilus is a past producer. It operated from 96 to 2010 in Quebec. It produced 2 million ounces of gold and 70,000 tons of copper. Um, I'm going to say a little bit about the history because the history really drives, I guess, the opportunity that we've had um, to now be pushing one of the largest development projects in Canada forward. Uh, it was operated by Emmet Mining. Emmet was a, a large global base metal company. Um, their main focus during this period of operation was building La Cruces in Spain, which is still operating today, and Cobra Panama, which many of us may have heard about in the news lately. So I was an analyst at the time. I'm a geologist by training. I covered in the Met for about eight years and was, was their banker. And the one thing that always stood out every single year was how undercapitalized this mine was. And so from the moment it went into production, not a single exploration hole was drilled, and there was never any effort to move the inferred forward through the category. So basically, once the reserve was exhausted, they had a failed merger with Lending Gold. First Quantum took them over hostily, and uh, First Quantum put this on care and maintenance and actually started to reclaim the mine by tearing down the mill. I came in privately with my investors uh, in 2016, to looked at the opportunity via an option agreement, spent a few million bucks, and um, 2018 came to market. And when we came to market, we had about a million, 1.2 million, 1.3 million ounces underground in a very low grade gold X analogy. Jump forward to today, and this is kind of where I'll kick off the presentation. We're sitting with uh, 13 million ounces equivalent. Uh, when I say equivalent throughout the presentation, think 20% gold, 80 or 20% copper, 80% gold, um, of which 11.2 million is indicated. And we're quickly advancing this project forward in a brownfield situation. So Ari was talking about good environments. Quebec's a great environment. You know, I'll, I'll talk about cash shortly. I'm getting $15.2 million back from the Quebec government very shortly as a tax refund because we drilled using hard dollars. Um, Brownfield project takes a lot of risk away from development. We know how the rock works, we know how the metallurgy is, we know the opportunities exist, and our stakeholders are all completely aligned because they've been with us for the last 25 years. Resource is growing, I'll spend some time on that. Feasibility is out shortly, we were hoping to have it out now, um, but we've come across some incredible opportunities to go even bigger uh, and more profitable, and so we're gonna need a few more weeks. Uh, we'll have it out very shortly. And we were, as far as ESG, I have a whole slide on that. We were the first in uh, Quebec to be ESG certified through Ecologo. We're about $160 million market cap. We have about 15 or 16 million in the bank right now and another 15 coming in from our last deal that was done. Um, we have about 15 or $16 million of warrants in the money and our large institutional shareholders are exercising. So our balance sheet is quite strong. We are 65 to 70% institutionally held now, um, with Equinox out of New York and Connecticut being our largest, and Steve Land at Franklin, Sprott, and then uh, as well, Quebec Inc. And we spend a lot of time with Quebec. So our largest Quebec institutions, Investment Quebec, the case, FTQ, Sidex, um, SA James Bay, have participated in all of our deals after significant due diligence and of course give you that validity and support within the province which is key. Um, management insiders own about 8% of which I own about 6% as the largest individual shareholder. Um, so we're in really good shape to not only move a project forward um, through to development but to actually to move a financing package in place as well. Our team's done it before. I won't spend a lot of time on the team. I am going to point out Eric Lamontang on our board. Eric was the last superintendent at Troilus. He is now the individual who's responsible for the construction of the $1.6 million Greenstone project for Equinox and Orion, which of all the mines being built right now is on time and on budget. And uh, Troilus is going to be quite a, quite a lookalike to that. Not going to spend time on Quebec. We know where it is. 
We're in the Fortet Evans Greenstone Belt to the north of the Abitibi. Same rocks, same metamorphic grade, same age. Really, the Fortet Evans Belt is a detached extension of the Abitibi. The real difference being the fall line between the two. We're buried under about 10 to 15 meters of till where the Abitibi is exposed. So historically, a lot less exploration has occurred. We have a ground position of about 500 square kilometers. We had 1,500 about a year and a half ago. We sold 1,000 square kilometers to uh, Australian lithium miner Sayona Mining as their mobile and asset is near there for 50 million. Uh, that provided us with non-dilutive financing for the last uh, year and a half or so. We have an active mining lease for which the old pits are on. Um, I will deal with the water in the pits right now. They're not beautiful lakes. They are <laughs> flooded pits. We have 30 million cubic liters of water, meters of water in there. Not acid generation, generating EIA has done $6 million of barges and pumps have been uh, purchased and are operating. We're fully permitted and our Cree partners are dewatering as we speak. Uh, I think when we talk permitting risk, especially in North America, water is always one of the most significant um, topics of consideration and the fact that we're actively discharging into the environment and that our Cree stakeholders are doing it is a good sign. I think one thing that sets us apart in this world of capital inflation as well as the infrastructure that we have, we don't have a mill. Um, that $500 million replacement cost is about three weeks old. It was 350, two and a half years ago. And you can calculate the impact of inflation over that time. Uh, we've also invested about 25 million US upgrading a lot of these things. So we have a 100 man camp. We, we have two sites cleared historically and we've upgraded for up to a 1500 man construction camp and a 500 man full year camp. Full septic sewer, water, all services are there. We have 60 kilometer, 171 kV line to site, uh, feeding a 50, mil, a 50 megawatt substation, which we've upgraded from analog to digital for all new operating systems. We have a 40 kilometer road into site, uh, which we've resurfaced, uh, three lanes wide, capable of taking all concentrate haul trucks as it was. We replaced a bridge. And the single most important, or two important things, a lot of our civils are done. These huge capital increases that you see for mines around the world right now are not your fixed price items. They're not your, your fleet or your mill. You sign a contract, you get what you pay for. It's how much rock are you moving? How much dirt are you moving? What are your civils costing? A lot of our civils are done. And the single best thing is six and a half square kilometers of full, fully permitted center line constructed tailings. Um, to build that from scratch today would easily be 350 million US. Uh, we are going to have almost life of mine capacity there um, with a couple lifts. We have five years before a lift and then we'll do in pit disposal after that. There's our resource growth. This is low grade bulk tonnage deposit. Think Malartic, think Detour, um, think Blackwater of Artemis, think Greenstone. Uh, we've had successful exploration. We've drilled, our, I think as of this morning, we're up almost 375,000 meters. We have two drills going now. Um, the analogy that I use when talking about the historic work is it's not that Imet did bad work. Imet just did no work. They did great work elsewhere. And that was the opportunity for us. We have a 98% hit rate on our drills. Uh, we have gone from, like I said on the left, a uh, million and a half ounces underground. It's a nice little tight deposit, 1.6 um, grams. It's uh, very analogous to Goldex. But now we have eight kilometers of almost continuous mineralization, which we're going to be able to exploit via one super pit and another pit, which I'll show you. Um, there. Southwest deposits sitting about 1.2 million ounces. Um, sorry, 1.9 million ounces. That was a brand new discovery at the bottom of a, of a gravel pit that we were using to resurface the road. Pit rock looked like the 87 pit wall. Um, 100,000 meters later, it's almost 2 million ounces. The, the main pit there is going to be over three and a half kilometers long by about a kilometer wide. It'll go down to about 500 meters. It was made up up until about a year ago, two pits, 87 and the J zone. 
um, which have expanded. We found X22, which is significantly higher grade. Discovery hole was 50 meters of, uh, of five grams from surface. The great thing about that discovery or structural discovery is that it turned the three zones into one pit now and it reduced our strip ratio significantly. So uh, we, that area, rather than two separate pits, is now about a 35% lower strip and we're gonna be seeing about 3.2 to one in that deposit. Um, we have significantly higher grade. We're gonna be able to exploit around a gram for the first four or five years. And in this market, it's all about low grade bulk tonnage deposits do not give you high IRRs, they never have. You know, when Malarcta came out, it was an 18% IRR, Detour was a 12. But once you repay your invested capital, they're the single most profitable mines in Canada right now. So our focus in every large, low, low grade bulk tonnage deposit is repay invested capital as fast as humanly possible, drop your cutoff grade and push tons. This mine is gonna be operating between 35 and 50,000 tons a day. Uh, just distribution of drilling. We have two drills in the gap zone right now. Um, supposed to be for condemnation drilling. Unfortunately, it's hitting a lot more ore, so we're going to have to find a place to move a couple of waste piles. But um, again, just un untapped exploration. We have economic inter uh, economic intersections to the north and the south that we need to follow up. We just haven't had time over the last four years, four and a half years. We've had between seven and twelve drills going nonstop. Just a comparison, and I usually don't, it's not good to compare yourself against other companies, but I had dinner with Stephen Dean down at the BMO conference this week, and I'm gonna talk about what a great job he's done, and this is what we strive to be. Here are the development uh, projects in Canada that are either in permitting and moving towards development or in construction. Troila stands out as the one, one of the, the, the largest, um, and take a look at Artemis, same size, we're a little bit bigger, a little bit higher grade, but it's a bit of a rounding error. Uh, that's a little low. Steven's uh, $1.7 billion market cap, he told me uh, two days ago. They are, they bought the resource from New Gold. We all know Blackwater, we followed it for the last 15 or 16 years. The gold market has got right. Um, they bought it, they put out the feasibility, they permitted it, they funded it, and now they're 40 or 50% done construction. The market de-risks low-grade or rewards low-grade bulk tonnage deposits through systematic de-risking. We've spent the last four and a half years getting to the resource stage. Our feasibility will be out imminently. We are 10 months into the permitting process already. Detailed project descriptions are in terms of reference are done, consultations are done, all the data is collected. Stantex ready in our EIA. We hope to have it in, in the middle of the year and be in a position to break ground middle of 2025 in kind of a perfect world. Troilus had a $160 million market cap this morning. It's going to deliver all of those catalysts which systematically de-risk this asset over the next 12 months. So I think it's a great time, especially if we have some wind at our sales in the gold environment. I'm not gonna spend much time on copper because I have not a lot of time, but 15 to 16% of our revenue comes from copper. Strategic mineral for Quebec and for Canada, we are seeing subsidies across the board that are going to lower our cost of capital as we move forward and also make this gold asset a priority for the governments. Um, we're going to produce over 600,000 ounces of silver a year, which is going to account for less than 1% of the total revenue. Exploration, we have focused exploration program this year, about four or five million dollars focused on grade. We don't need more ounces. Anything within this uh, map can be accretive to our project. Um, we're especially excited about four at uh, Palador. That's right next to Sumitomo's Renault, where uh, last week they just put out 19 meters of 19 grams. And I think the drill's about two meters from our property border. So uh, maybe we'll just put one on the other side. ESG, first in Quebec to get Ecologo, first company under a $2 billion to be part of the UN Global Compact. This is incredibly important to our stakeholders and to our cost of capital when we move towards financing. So you uh, you have to take it very seriously. We're working with Tuklik Energy right now, who just uh, energized all of Raglan with wind. And we're looking with our Cree partners at uh, potential future pro projects post uh, commissioning. 
that's the timeline I kind of laid it out to you. Anything I tell you on this timeline is wrong, but uh, certainly best efforts are being made to deliver to this. So really the focus is on the catalyst. Over the next 12 months, you're gonna see between five and six major de-risking catalysts, which are also going to involve, um, and that's what I've really spent most of my time on, full financing packages for this operation. And it's going to be a big capex think between 800 and a billion dollars, which shouldn't surprise anybody, and it won't. But certainly what we're seeing in Quebec and in Ontario right now is partnerships with majors. It's pervasive. If you look at what Equinox done as Greenstone with Orion, Sumitomo and, and I am Gold at Cote, at Cisco and Goldfields um, at Windfall, Risk is being spread amongst partners right now, and when you have 13 million ounces equivalent in Quebec, everybody needs to have a pretty good opinion of that. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. Sorry I'm over.